Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name Alan. And I used to love it when automobile manufacturers released prototype concept cars. They were always pushing the envelope in design, material science, and function. And they were a whole lot more interesting than the copy and paste consumer designs that manufacturers were rolling out for the masses. Another vanguard of interesting car designs is science fiction film. Artists and designers have to create entire worlds filled with realistic looking and oftentimes functional props. So today I thought it'd be cool to look at some of the coolest futuristic car designs in science fiction. Minority Report has oftentimes been held up as an example of relatively accurate and predictive science fiction. From retinal scans to augmented reality and of course, a future of automated cars, they get a lot of things right. In the Minority Report, Steven Spielberg predicts that instead of having extremely smart AI that can drive our cars, our roads instead will become smart and enclosed from all other types of traffic, making the job much easier for the smart cars to stay on track. The Lexus 2054 is the main featured automobile that we see Tom Cruise use in the film, and it's an actual concept car designed by Harold Belker, a film industry expert who's designed dozens of awesome sci-fi vehicles, weapons, and other props. The Lexus 2054 would run on fuel cells and have many advanced safety features, including biometric security features and an extremely durable frame. The smart car could also act as a personal assistant for the occupant and order dinner and select background music. We wouldn't just see the Lexus 2054 in the minority report, the concept car would have a cameo in the film The Island as well. iRobot, which comes out just two years after Minority Report, had some similar ideas when it came to envisioning the future. This includes having automated cars taking over the roadways. In response to the Lexus 2054, Audi partners with iRobots and presented their own prototype Audi RSQ, a mid-engine concept car designed for the Chicago landscapes of 2035. The Audi RSQ actually highly resembles a futuristic version of the Audis we see on the road today from the A4 to the Audi R8. The engineers and designers purposely added the Audi single frame grille to the front to make sure that their product placement will be instantly recognizable as an Audi. Something that the Lexus 2054 doesn't really do a good job of. Whether you're a South African mercenary or an oil sheik from a not-so-stable Middle Eastern country, the Land Rover has always been synonymous with VIP protection. So it's not surprising that in the year of 2139, in the expansive super city known just as Mega City One, the Land Rover will once again carry people to safety through a very dangerous environment. Meet the Land Rover City Cab, the perfect taxi design for the most dangerous city in the world where literally everyone is armed to the teeth. The British automaker actually helped modify one of their existing designs to create this yellow monstrosity. And no, they didn't just take a Land Rover Discovery or Defender and bolt on a bunch of nonsense. Instead, they used their Land Rover 101 forward control vehicle, a legitimate military truck powered by a 3.5 liter Rover V8 engine. For all of you Americans out there, 3.5 liters and a V8 is considered really large displacement for Europeans. The Land Rover City Cab featured a massive amount of armored plating, including a very well-protected passenger compartment. It also had a gigantic rocket-like exhaust tube in the rear and what looks like a bunch of speakers as well. You can tell this is a classy vehicle because one of the most classy human beings in the history of humanity, Sylvester Stallone, actually owns one of these. He also reportedly rode one of these to the premiere of Judge Dredd. James Bond always has the coolest cars. In The Spy Who Loved Me, Roger Moore rocks the Lotus E-Spirit S1, which actually comes from the legendary Italian car designer Giorgetto Giugiaro, who is known for his origami-like concept cars like this Maserati Boomerang. The Lotus E-Spirit S1 featured a fiberglass body mounted on a steel backbone chassis with a mid-engine Lotus 907 four-cylinder engine, which pumped out 160 horsepower. Weighing only 2,205 pounds, this was an incredibly speedy and very maneuverable sports car. 
exactly what James Bond would have driven. Now, this particular e-spirit, nicknamed Went Nelly, could also transform itself into a submersible. As Richard Hammond finds out, the Went Nelly comes with stabilizing fins, sonar, propellers, a different control surface for underwater steering, along with a fully sealed cabin. Now, when the actual movie was made, they just put a Lotus e-spirit shell around a mini submersible, which was piloted by a Navy SEAL. It doesn't look quite as good. Now, we obviously can't get through a list of best futuristic cars without mentioning the DeLorean DMC-12. The brainchild of automobile genius John DeLorean, whose own personal story was crazy enough to have a full feature film made about it, the former GM exec contracted Giorgetto Giugiaro, designer of the Lotus e-Spirit we just talked about, to make a car design that not only looked futuristic, but was also crammed with some of the most futuristic design features at the time as well. The DeLorean DMC was supposed to feature a plastic chassis, a mid-engine layout featuring a very unorthodox rotary engine, along with airbags and Pirelli P7 tires. Unfortunately, DeLorean dreamed way too big and most of these features were not included. This is probably a side effect of his massive cocaine consumption. The actual DMC-12 that did arrive for consumers was underpowered, underwhelming, and had terrible reliability. But it did look awesome with its futuristic gold wing doors, which is why it was chosen as the main time machine car in Back to the Future, which would forever immortalize the DeLorean DMC-12. For the younger generations who don't really know anything about Back to the Future, just watch Stranger Things or Ready Player One. We haven't really talked about any flying cars yet on our futuristic car list, which is kind of surprising. Given the fact that everyone seems to believe that the invention of this type of transportation is just around the corner. But the reality is not whether we can build these flying cars or not, we definitely can. It's why would we have these flying cars? I mean, why would you allow humans who are barely capable of driving cars in the first place the ability to fly around in cars? Just imagine how terrible the accidents and traffic would be. We're talking about complete chaos. Now, in the world of Blade Runner, there is a certain portion of the population that does fly around in vehicles known as spinners. These are vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that use jet propulsion but can also function as ground-based vehicles. Blade Runner's solution for not having extremely crowded skies full of dangerous drivers is limiting who can drive a spinner to only the police. Although if you are super wealthy, you can also probably get your hands on a license. Now, I wasn't alive for Blade Runner's premiere in 1982, but I imagine seeing Deckard flying over future LA in a spinner was an extremely iconic moment in film history. A moment that inspired many sci-fi artists that followed Blade Runner, which is why this spinner vehicle actually has dozens of cameos in all sorts of films, TV shows, and even video games. We even see these spinners in the air traffic over Coruscant in Star Wars, and it's also featured in Back to the Future Part 2. I'm normally not a fan of the Batmobile in its many variations. It's usually too long and shaped like a dragster, which is the opposite of what you want in a car chase. But when The Dark Knight came out and we first saw the Tumbler, it was hard for audiences not to fall in love. Designed originally by Wayne Enterprises Applied Science Division, the Tumbler was originally a military bridging vehicle that could literally jump over rivers thanks to the vector-controlled jet engine on the back of the tank, which also gives it a boost when in regular driving mode. Not only was the Tumbler extremely maneuverable, it was also off-road capable, heavily armored, and featured machine guns, mines, and rocket launchers. And if you did manage to destroy the Tumbler, the front wheels ejected from the vehicle to form the Batpod. The actual Tumbler made from the movie featured a completely custom design chassis because the Tumbler was so different from any production vehicle out on the market. Although they did source a pretty normal small block 5.7 liter V8 Chevy engine, which pumps out around 400 horsepower. So there you have it guys, those are my top seven futuristic vehicles from science fiction. Let me know in the comment section below which one is your favorite. I'm sure we've missed the bunch that haven't gotten onto this list. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.